Welcome back. It's not news that tensions have been rising between Nigerians living in South Africa and their neighbors. Now, some have died as a result of jungle justice meted out over allegations of crime and criminality. This is where the leadership of both countries and last year, Foreign Affairs Ministers of Nigeria and South Africa set up a 24-hour early warning system to protect Nigerians from unwarranted attacks. The Minister of Foreign Affairs back then said, wherever any Nigerian is threatened or in difficulty, we will always intervene quickly. An example of this was in Italy. You will recall last year or the year before there was a Nigerian who was attacked and killed. We quickly engaged with Italian government and really took all the necessary steps, arresting people and paying compensation to the family. So we will always engage to protect Nigerian lives wherever they may be. We're hoping now to set up a 24-hour call center so that Nigerians anywhere in the world can call a particular number whenever they're in distress. And we also remember he said the Nigerian High Commission in South Africa had been directed to facilitate legal support to help the victims of recent xenophobia attacks in the country to get their compensations. Now, the Senior Special Advisor to the President on Foreign Affairs, Abike Dabiri Erwa, wants an urgent review of early warning signal. She spoke with Channel Television on the reason why this needs to happen and the situation surrounding the early warning system. Early warning mechanism actually needs to be finalized. It needs to be uh, implemented. And uh, from all indications, the ministries of foreign affairs of both countries are doing everything to make that happen. You know, there are some details that need to be worked out, but it needs to be finalized um, with it, uh, as soon as possible so that implementation, proper and full implementation, can begin. It needs to also be strengthened um, where need be. You know, but I was in South Africa a few weeks back, about two weeks ago, and that was the same day that uh, some Nigerians had to go to court for... Um, in Rustenburg, you recall that before these latest killings, something happened in Rustenburg, and we have 14 Nigerians that are currently um, in court for what they call violation of um, public order or something like that. Now, it's so bad that the, 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 the community, the occupants of that community in Rustenburg, the South Africans, have said if the judge releases those Nigerians uh, on bail, they're going to burn all the houses. And the threat was put in place when three days later, someone's house in Nigeria was around that community and it was burnt to death. So it's, it's becoming worse, it's, be, it's, it's alarming, and um, it's something that we need to um, really take as serious as, as we should. However, we need to tell our own citizens, our Nigerian brothers and sisters, the home truth. You can't be in another person's country doing drugs, prostitution, rape, trafficking, and it's so persistent and very high. So you cannot continue to do that in any person's country. If you cannot abide by the rules of that country, then leave the country. So that is one thing we should look at and tell ourselves the home truth. I was taken to a particular location in South Africa, and I was actually embarrassed at what I saw, the, the xenophobic attack, which South Africa needs to actually deal with. They cannot pretend that it's not happening. It is happening, and they need to deal with it um, seriously. South African, South African blacks need to know that you can live peacefully with your brothers and sisters. And like I said, one bad apple should not spoil the whole bunch. And there should be massive awareness within the communities, at the communal level. There's no problem at the government-to-government -government level. But at the communal level, we need to talk to each other and, you know, embark on massive um, awareness campaigns. But we're also optimistic with the new president of South Africa. Yeah. We're expecting that these issues will be dealt with, you know, the way it should be. And we're also, and there's a new foreign affairs minister that our minister would also be meeting with us um, uh, very, very soon. So hopefully this should be a thing of the past. Don't forget that crime is high in South Africa. There's a whole lot of insecurity in South Africa. I mean, According to the statistics, about 50 crime killings are recorded virtually every month. So um, South Africa needs to deal with these issues and decisively too. But I'll just tell Niger our Nigerian brothers and sisters that uh, don't take the law into your hands. Everything is being done to ensure that you are protected. And I want to commend our mission in South Africa. 
in uh, Johannesburg at uh, Pretoria, the consulate and the high commission, for actually being very proactive. A lot of times, they've always been at the state immediately it happens. They've been in touch with the uh, members of the South African community. So I appeal to our brothers and sisters in South Africa to continue to engage with the Nigerian authorities in South Africa, work together, um, and ensure that you know these things are properly tackled on our level. So we continue to hope that South Africa will do the needful. And here are other discussions in diplomatic circles. China and the United States have issued a joint statement on economic and trade consultations, vowing not to launch a trade war against each other. Based on the directions of Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Donald Trump, the Chinese and U.S. delegations conducted constructive consultations and trade issues on Thursday and Friday. Both sides agreed to take effective measures to substantially decrease the U.S. trade deficit in goods with China. China will significantly increase its purchase of U.S. goods and services to meet the consumption needs of the Chinese people and propel the high-quality economic development of China which also helps support the U.S. economic development and employment. The two nations agreed to meaningfully increase the export of U.S. agriculture and energy products. The U.S. side will send a delegation to China for further consultations. Meanwhile, according to China's former Vice Minister of Foreign Trade and Economic Cooperation, Long Yongtu, China and the U.S. have the wisdom and ability to properly handle their trade frictions. He made the remarks at the fourth annual China and Globalization Forum held on Sunday in Beijing in the wake of the second round of trade talks between China and the U.S. <laughs> With the guidance of the leaders of China and the United States, the delegations of the two countries have made some preliminary agreement and reached positive and pragmatic achievements. It indeed is a cheerful outcome, and it proves that the two countries have the wisdom and the ability to properly handle their economic affairs and trade frictions. The view that the trade frictions between China and the U.S. have shaken their strategic relationship and a new big power relationship is untenable. Well, I've said, and yeah, I said this loads of bit. Over in Scotland, pro-independence First Minister Nicola Sturgeon says she would again consider another vote on independence for Scotland when the British government offers some certainty over Brexit. The Scots rejected independence by a 10 percentage point margin in 2014. But Britain's vote to leave the European Union has exposed fresh divisions in the United Kingdom. Well, I've said, and you know, I said this round about this time last year, that uh, once we get some clarity, which hopefully we will in the autumn of this year, about the Brexit outcome and the future relationship between the UK and the EU, then I will consider again this uh, question of the timing of an independence referendum. I'm not going to say more about that. Scotland and Ireland voted to stay in the EU, while Wales and England voted to leave. Um, further, whether the withdrawal agreement text Russian President Vladimir Putin says he will stand up to any attempts by U.S. President Donald Trump to block a Russian-German gas pipeline project. He made the comment during a meeting with him and German Chancellor Angela Merkel on Friday. Berlin and Moscow have been at loggerheads since Russia's annexation of Crimea four years ago, but they share a common interest in the Nord Stream 2 pipeline project which will allow Russia to export more natural gas to Northern Europe. A U.S. government official this week said Washington had concerns about the project and that companies involved in Russian pipeline projects faced a higher risk of being hit with U.S. sanctions. Putin told the news conference, Donald is not just the U.S. president, he's also a good, tough entrepreneur, and I think he's promoting the interests of his business to ensure the sales of American liquefied natural gas on the European market. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. But it is costly. While the Russian leader is frequently critical of U.S. policy, 
Putin has always been respectful in his comments on Trump, with whom Kremlin officials say he has built up a personal rapport. Thanks for staying with us again this week. I hope you'll join me next time. Previous editions of Diplomatic Channel can be found on Channel's TV website and on the Channel's TV channel on YouTube. I am Amarachi Obani. I'll see you next time.